some people told me that this is not really the perf perfect time for a Syrian to be giving public speeches in Lebanon. But it is because of the recent terror attacks and the ensuing events, the mass hysteria against refugees, including collective punishment. I believe this is the perfect time. I would be a fool to ignore the fears, the concerns, and the anxieties of the Lebanese people regarding the Syrian situation. Security threats, negative economic environments, and poisonous media promoting xenophobia for different and conflicting political agendas. It is because of all of that that the time is perfect for me to speak out. First, to my Lebanese brothers and sisters, we have one story. Our history is one and so is our future. We go way back and we should not allow bigotry and the mistakes of our governments to rule us. It is up to us, the people, to change this reality, not just for you and I, but for my grandchildren and yours. To the international community, did you really think that this mass tremor in the land of St. Paul, St. Ananias, the land of Jesus and Muhammad could simply be contained with some food aid and lackluster politics? So please, put your hidden agendas aside and focus on building peace in Syria. Not just for Lebanon and Syria's sake, but also for that of all humanity, whose cradle of civilization lies between this sea and Mesopotamia. Let us find a solution for the Syrian crisis. Allow me to give you an insider's peek on how our future will look like if we don't all do something now. The number of Syrian refugee children enrolled in Lebanese public schools in both shifts is around 90,000, yet still leaving more than two-thirds of Syrian refugee children without educational opportunities. That means there are 300 Syrian children in Lebanon who are out of school. That's 300,000 uneducated, neglected, and marginalized adults who will populate. Now you do the catastrophic math. I was an educator at an orphanage here in Lebanon for Syrian children and was responsible for 15 kids, ages 4 to 6, which means they were either born during the war in Syria and came here, or they were born here in Lebanon. In my first session with the kids, I asked them, what is big and yellow, stays up in the sky and gives us warmth and light? The guesses were, helicopter, ambulance, light bulb. But not one of them could recall the sun. What child doesn't yell sun when asked about the big ball of light in the sky? Now let me introduce you to a few of my friends. Muna, an eight-year-old girl threatens her family that she will kill herself because life is too scary and she believes that everyone wants to harm her. Sara, a five-year-old girl who's been raped twice, freezes and turns yellow whenever any young man looks her in the eyes. Ahmed, a little boy with a, a little boy who will draw a man with a gun whenever you ask him to draw himself. Rahaf, a four-year-old girl who will call you mommy if you show her any sign of affection. Ahmed, Akram, a 12-year-old kid who will... Akram. Sorry. is a 12-year-old kid who has three years as experience as a shisha boy and two as a shoe wiper. Noura, a 10-year-old young lady who is not even sure what her real name is or where she's even from. Amira lost both her parents and her ability to speak. Yamin was raised by a prostitution gang in Beirut and was tied to his bed all day long until he was rescued. Omar held on to his brother's hand after a missile hit his home and killed all his family. He then ran for miles before realizing he was holding on to his brother's detached arm. And Maryam was found in a garbage dumpster. I can go on for days. See, it's not just about donating money to NGOs or volunteering for a couple of days in some public event. Obviously, monetary donations are not enough. We need to collectively realize that our future is tied to theirs. 
just as much as it is tied to every other suffering soul on this planet. Go the extra mile. I'm not asking you to pull an Angelina and adopt the Syrian child and bring him home. Just maybe be his friend. Can you picture it? If each one of us decide, decides to befriend one Syrian kid, just one child, and give him half of what we give our own, ask about him, send him a birthday gift, visit his home, no matter how humble it is, teach him how to read. Can you imagine the love and loyalty that this human being will show you for the rest of his life? This is the time. We need to get personal. We can't be ostriches. And yes, it is a commitment. But unless we stop looking at all the refugees, all the homeless people, and the thousands cramped in the defecating slums all over Lebanon, as some still image somewhere in the background behind all the skyscrapers, we will only be falling deeper and deeper into a very dark and violent future. We must not forget, as we so easily tend to, that a hundred years ago, Lebanon and Syria did not exist as separate entities. We were one people for thousands upon thousands of years. Our last names are the same. Our traditions are the same. Our values and beliefs are the same. Our hearts even sing the same childhood songs we've all grown up to. The borders between us are invisible lines drawn by a bunch of very, very sick people. And the facts won't change. Lebanon and Syria will always be neighboring countries. The wellness and security of Syria means the wellness of and security of Lebanon and vice versa. The Syrian crisis will not end overnight. The two million Syrians will not suddenly go back to broken homes and death traps. And even if they could, it will not happen all at once. We cannot fight hate with hate. We can't discriminate and expect to be respected. And we definitely cannot survive without each other. There is peace in Syria, even if the Syrian economy does stand on its feet. There will still be around a million Syrians here in Lebanon. There are 400,000 Syrian workers in the Lebanese agricultural sector alone. So war or no war, the Syrian workforce is essential to the Lebanese economy. And I will not even go into the hundreds of Syrian Lebanese love stories happening as we speak. All I know is we could create our own heaven. And we could create our own head. Why not create a different dream for all of us? Together, we can light the path so our children can finally see the sun. Thank you.